Welcome back to the channel, Gio here, and today we are talking spirit photographer Saburo Kono. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to A Week in Geekdom, Geo here, and yeah, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am talking the new one-shot spirit photographer Saburo Kono from Kayu Shirai and Pozuka Demizu. If those names sound familiar, it is the same creative team that brought us the promised Neverland manga series. So this is their new one-shot about a spirit photographer, this quirky character named Saburo Kono, who goes around with a special camera taking snapshots at the deceased ghosts and stuff and in I guess in hopes of setting them free and helping them pass on to the next life. So this is sort of a drama slash uh, horror manga one shot. I am going to be spoiling some things about this one shot because it's a fairly quick read and I don't think a spoiler free uh, a video is completely necessary. So if you don't want any of the spoilers, I will just tell you that it is a cleverly done, spooky, dramatic one-shot. It's not groundbreaking or anything, but it's still a very fun, spooky, with a very heartfelt message at the end of it. So if you don't mind spoilers, let's jump into it. When the story begins of Saburo Kono, the spirit photographer, we meet the character of Sota, who is just a regular teenager, and as the story progresses, we find out that the neighbors in this apartment complex have been constantly moving out of a particular room. I believe it is next door. Yes, he is in 602. Uh, the room, the following apartment, uh, 603, has been vacant for quite some time until this character arrives, Saburo Kono, which uh, we see right here this quirky looking fellow with a camera he takes photographs and at, when i first started reading it i thought okay this guy is kind of creepy and i don't know if he has the best intentions but it turns out that he's not necessarily a bad guy he's asking sota for help and it turns out that he is investigating the apartment uh, next door which he rented because of a supposed spirit apparition so the spirit does show up eventually and we do get some minor exposition on on the main character and he as you can see here he is telling Sota the he specializes in spirit photography with his trusty camera right there Obviously, if you know your uh, folklore and urban legends and all that stuff, you might have heard in the past that people, uh, depending on the region, some people thought if you took a snapshot at them, you would freeze frame and take their soul. So a lot of people in, I'm going to say the 1800s, late 1800s in Japan and, and other places, did not necessarily like uh, photographs or people taking photos of them. So that, in a sense, I guess, would be the basis for the whole story, because that is what the character is doing, but with apparitions that are restless, and he's trying to make them pass on to the next life so they can finally rest. We find out that the apartment has been empty for some time because of a character called Yoko Kazizaki, who was living there and tragically, supposedly committed suicide. Nobody knew, and the police investigated, and there might have been some trouble at her work, which may have caused her to take her own life. Now, through the story, there's a lot of creepy elements, and you feel sort of this claustrophobic-type scenario, because uh, when Sota tries to leave the apartment, uh, the door's shut, and he can't escape, and it's all like this danger, and this incoming danger is... Uh, slowly getting its way to the two characters of the photographer and the young kid. So when that happens, I, this was easily my favorite part of uh, the one shot. You see the mounting tension here and the creepy scenario with a ghost incoming, which I thought was expertly done. And again, these creators made The Promised Neverland, which mixed action with horror elements and psychological issues and all that stuff so i could see those elements being poured into this and i really enjoyed that aspect and the creepy horror imagery 
when you do see the ghost is fabulous. I mean, look look at this. This is some really next level stuff. I love it, how uh, nasty and, and frightening this looks. So we find out in the story that Sota was the one that wanted to commit suicide because he was being bullied, it's, I presume, at school, and he didn't want to bother uh, his mother. So the character of Yoko Kakizaki, that, that's, a, that's a mouthful, uh, the character did not in fact commit suicide, she was trying to uh, help him through the balcony. She slipped and fell, and Sota feels terribly responsible for what happened, even though it's not his fault, and her wish was for him to not commit suicide and keep living and be happy. So there's, you know, he, he's a young kid and like many adults we don't really understand uh, things that happen uh, tragic events you know the, we don't really grasp the whole situation and sometimes we put blames on ourselves over these things uh, it, I, I really did enjoy that at the heart of this one shot yes it's a creepy uh, paranormal type story there's a message there to love yourself and to keep going and, and keep living and having the strength to go forward because tomorrow will be a better day. So I really did appreciate the fact that they took time to create this mini story and I would like, hopefully in the future, to see uh, this title get expanded into a full-fledged manga. I thought it would be I think it would be pretty cool. I think the character of Saburo Kono, if you make a series about this guy, it would mostly be like an anthology of different cases, which I don't really mind. I think it would be pretty fun. Maybe a small limited series with different cases and, you know, crime solving and, you know, you sort of mix elements of like Detective Conan, but with a more spooky twist, stuff like that. I, I think it would be an interesting title going forward if enough people support spirit photographer Saburo Kono. So we'll see. Overall, it's it's a fairly quick read, kind of spooky, dramatic, and gives you a positive message going forward that I do think a lot of people do need to read and, and enjoy. The art is great, it's, it's clean and, and precise, but it also doesn't shy away from being grotesque and scary when the really creepy stuff starts to happen. Also for a series like this, it sort of depends on uh, fighting mechanics or some sort of battle aspect to a story like it but i wanted to highlight this quick panel here at the end where you have saburo proclaiming that he's not an exorcist he's just a photographer and he's capturing these uh spooky snapshots if you will uh and he's just specializing in spirit photography here you can see some of the artwork which i thought was really cool i'm using the shonen jump app on my tablet here but yeah, overall, just a fantastic uh, little one-shot uh, with some really cool character designs, very distinct, obviously, the same creative team as The Promised Neverland, so you're getting a, a visual treat, in my opinion, when it comes to the characters. There's nothing to write home about with the backgrounds. This is solely a character piece about this tiny experience that's out of this world, if you will. And yeah, uh, also the metaphor and the usage of the butterflies and stuff to sort of explain the soul leaving the body and all that stuff is uh, really pretty and well done and I really enjoyed it. So overall, I, I did enjoy this one shot. I do recommend it if you want to read something out of the norm when it comes to uh, Shonen Jump material. I do recommend Spirit Photographer Saburo Kono. Have you read this? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't, let me know what are some of your favorite ghost comics overall or manga in the comment section down below. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. It truly does mean a whole lot. Thank you everybody. I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next video.